Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Zwift Me Live broadcast of the 3R Wahoo Ride Race Series. We're on race number four. We're out on the Gotham Grind today in New York. I'm Nathan Garrett. Dave Toll next to me virtually coming out of Colorado. I'm at ZCL Production Studios. We got three minutes and 21 seconds to start of the B race. A race is going off in about two minutes. We'll be covering both, and uh, it's going to be a great race here today. Let's go ahead and take a look, though. Dave, uh, it's been th four, let's see, three races so far into the series. We've got seven total, and uh, well, this is all based on GC timing out here today, so we can take a look at how the GC standings are going. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Nathan. Uh, good morning and welcome everybody around the world. I guess it's into the afternoon for most of us or even the evening as a lot of the racers, Nathan, sitting up in our top 10 overall race out of Europe. Uh, with, I'd say just about half. And actually got to give our uh, shout out to Argentina. We have Leandro Messanillo and Juan Cruz Araldi with us here. So it's quite a mix. This is one of the most competitive races that we see week in, week out. And we are locked loaded and calibrated as it's time to get it on here gotham grind nathan can we talk about the course a little bit actually let's just jump right in and take a look at our top 10 i see what you're doing there is andy turner and andrew hodden have been leading here uh as nathan mentioned it's based on time this is a gc battle round four of seven launching here today james barnes there is sitting in third christopher mcglinchy out of northern ireland that's the irish flag is in fourth george boy domination coming out of the united United Kingdom and Ireland as uh, George Mills Keeling, the young, talented rider, and his uh, another rider out of the United Kingdom, Zach Harrod, sitting in sixth. Then you look at the Welsh flag for Rick Anderson, the Scottish flag for Simon Archer. Finally, we get outside of uh, the British Isles there. Is, uh, it's Leandro Messanillo, one of the most dangerous riders out there from Argentina. And then Neil Richards rounding out our top ten. Yeah, pretty close there between those top three, and I think that's why we're seeing a big, uh, as well as Chris McGlinchey there and George Mills Keeling, I think we, there's a lot of representation from those teams, actually, with about 30 seconds to start in the A category. I'm just going to jump real quickly into the Bs here. Uh, it does look like a tough fight here between Lewis Pinheiro as well as Roth Hetherington there with only a five seconds difference. Then a little ways back, it looks like Jonah Martin, Mike Taylor, Steve Fleetwood. Sebastian Kuhn is out there coming out of Germany. Germany. Both Steve Fleetwood and Sebastian Kuhn, longtime viewers. Good to see you boys out there racing the three-hour series. Auto Slavos, Chris Wiley, and then it's going to be Stuart Hardy for the BRT. How about Tomlinson uh, there in that B category? The A's do take off, though. Let's go ahead and Here jump on with them as we will uh, be jumping in with the rest of the uh, GC standings uh, after some of the racing action gets underway. B category is hanging out, though, in the pens with 46 seconds to start. Fast and furious starts as usual. I'm seeing a name here. Not a lot of climbing out here today, but uh, it looks like things are about to, <laughs> as, as Dave Toll has coined it, things are about to get laverick perhaps out there today. <laughs> yeah, and Nathan, nothing has changed, has it, as far as the starts of these events goes? I mean, if we went back to the last two years, it has always been uh, you just put the accelerator down on the floorboard for at least five minutes and just hope that you're in the front group when all of the dust settles. Is that pretty fair? I mean, has it ever been different? Did they ever ease into it out here? Because there's nothing I don't think there's like never start. been. There's there's never been no. a Zwift race that has started no. that you easy. would call ease <laughs> into it. They there's never been an it. ease into no. it. You look at like a race like uh, Ronde van Vlaanderen, Tour of Flanders, right, where guys will miss the start by a minute having a cup of coffee, and they, it's no big deal. You just roll along for the first 50K or whatever it is, and uh, it's certainly very different out here. They're already one kilometer in, or just about to hit one kilometer, Nathan, and you're going to see that that time is at about a 104. <laughs> so that would be world class from a standing start. You, although you're in a group, obviously, but uh, these boys are hauling already. So it's on uh, the Gotham grind. Uh, this is a round four of seven. Nathan, this is a course that I'm not super familiar with. Uh, obviously, we're using the, uh, the one of the my favorite where I rode here this morning, actually, in New York. But tell me about this course. It looks like to me anyways, it looks on paper like it's going to be hard to get too much separation. I would be expecting to see a group of over 10 riders in the last 1K. Yeah, not think? a whole lot of set, not a whole lot of separation. You're absolutely correct there. Uh, the, now there is a little bit of a kick on the uh, each each lap though, for sure. Fairly sharp. Uh, you're going to be looking at about that the 5k mark. Be on the watch out 
for, you know, I think there's about uh, 50 meters of climbing or so. So, I mean, it, there's a, there is going to be a couple of sections where they can really punch it uh, to try and get away, but they're going to have to be very organized attacks. But there is a reality out here today as we look through some of the riders. I mean, Innovation has shown up with a huge team out here today in support of, I believe, Bar uh, James Barnes, actually, who is sitting uh, in the overalls. Uh, currently in third place, only uh, he's got some seconds to make up out here uh, with uh, Andy Turner up there at 147.16. But uh, less than a minute separating James Barnes and first place. And Innovation, I believe, you'll be looking for that uh, alien kit there on the left-hand side, if you can see, of the pack here at this point. Um, that is going to be the kit of Innovation. Wood is out here uh, in support of that as well. I have a feeling we're going to see some attacks from them because the reality is if they want to make up that time, Time, they've got to get their man off the front yeah i agree nathan going back to your point a little bit earlier about uh, in order to make a difference on this course and uh, you mentioned we'll talk about some of the teams to watch without a doubt but you're going to need to time it perfectly you're going to need to be in position to be in position to be able to make a difference if you know what i mean your team's gonna have to really coordinate and collaborate well out there but that's the name of the game precision is required to win uh, especially at this level uh, I, I'm always amazed at the physicality of this but it's that chess match that Machiavellian chess match that goes on out here as well as uh, boy the, the riders that know the game Nathan have we not seen that over the last couple months no matter how strong you are you will get schooled out here if you don't uh, know how to play Zwift correctly. I hit the feather on a downhill today, Nathan, accidentally. But I realized, like, that's the kind of ham-fisted thing that a rider who didn't know anything about Zwift might do, right? You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Really, Down, downhill downhill feathers don't do a whole not lot for smart. you, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that's not the right play as they would say in Vegas, I think. So, all right, Nathan, we do have a bunch of races going on, but uh, in this category, it's going to be, I mean, when you look at the profile, and you can do the same yourself if you go to ZwiftPower.com, it's pretty easy to find the event there. This is the 3R and Wahoo Ride Real Race Series. Uh, big thanks to Wahoo, by the way. I love that they, I mean, they've got skin in the game, as you say. Uh, so many folks love their Wahoo trainer and all the accessories that go with with it uh i'm even having to think i need a, a wahoo headwind oh so taking a look now at our front group nathan coming up on 4k here yeah really great uh, point here coming down in from uh the youtube lots of comments coming on in from the youtube as well as the facebook good to see everybody chatting away and uh go ahead and bring in your questions your comments who you think is going to take the win out here today saunders is thinking that there's so many talented riders in this group though it's hard to know who's going to take the win on the night i have to really agree with that i look as i looked at the start list uh it's definitely the very stacked field evoke is showing up on the day as well we are looking at adam zimmerman here currently right now and that's going to be a u.s based team you'll be able to recognize them they're going to be in the uh you can see on the back of the kit here evoke bike there in the good job uh, vanilla whitish you know a little bit of light you know there's a little bit of a tan to that white there but uh adam zimmerman former u.s national champion i do believe holden camus is out here as well the current reigning national champion four stars to pros closet they showed up with gavin dempster uh taking the overall <laughs> obviously a tour of gila so uh not a climbers Did race you see today the... but with holden out there the i think cool... they're going to support him I am so sorry to jump on you there, Nathan. Did you see the cool trophy that he got for the Tour of the Gila win? Uh, Sarah Gigante received hers as well over down in Australia. But just a beautiful uh, uh, bowl that, that's crafted there in Silver City. That was great. Gavin Dempster deserved it. He worked really hard there. I, I, you know, when you look at this, uh, it's a who's who, Nathan, when you look at the riders that we've got in this field. I completely agree with that comment we just saw. As we've got Hodges, Camo, uh, the young, talented Vigo Moore, uh, uh, I mean, this list goes on and on. I mentioned the Argentinian riders. We talked about Gavin Dempster, but you got Scott Gleason, George Mills Keeling in our field. Andy Turner is here. Mike Cumming. I mean, this is really one of the strongest fields I've seen in a long time. And here we go, Nathan. It looks like they're cracking the whip now. Boys, buckle up at five point to mark that 5.3 K in, Nathan. The first real attack is going up the road, and it looks like it's going to be Hodges and Talbot. Yeah, Hodges and Talbot here now going off the front now. Talbot now 3.5 watts per kilometer. It does look like it's going to be one of the dropout boys here as well. So apologies on uh, we didn't get uh, everybody in 
as you can see, there is a little bit of a breakup here on the uh, connection with the riders. There are only the 100, I believe it has something to do with the 100 nearby for who you're able to view here. So there's a couple of uh, disappearing. They're not using their invisibility power up currently, <laughs> just so you guys know. But uh, there is a break going off the front. It does look like Lavish and a few others here making things happen. Austin Feldman as well. And so definitely a point of contention here. I think this is going to come back together, but you can see each and every lap, there's going to be that 10% uphill gradient. That, that punch there that uh, is going to give an opportunity. If they get organized enough, this is going to split things apart. Not everyone's going to make it. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, you can see there's going to be a couple of splits that happen, I estimate here, Nathan. Again, remembering this is going to be four laps on this circuit here today, totaling for right around 37K. Don't use that as your exact, uh, your exact mileage, but uh, it'll be something very close to that. And now they back off a little bit, Nathan, but you can see that there's guys, and there you go, another attack going. That's when you do it. When it's hard and there's a little bit of a lull, why not pour it on and up and over the top? It looks like we've got a few riders who are really going to try to make a difference here in the early part of, again, a 37-kilometer slugfest going on. These guys never disappoint. Here we go, Nathan. Yeah, it does look like uh, the split started to come back a little bit. I think one or two riders did fall off the back, but still, so it looks so many riders here in amongst this group still. Uh, yeah, uh, 160 almost starting here. That's quite a field. That really is. I mean, in real life, uh, Nathan, typically, I mean, for insurance reasons, rider safety reasons, timing and scoring reasons, 150 is about the largest field you're going to see in North America. I don't know exactly how they do it with amateur racing in Europe, but I'm going to guess something pretty similar because, uh, you know, I, I realize that, you know, world tour events uh, like Tour de France or, you know, the, the big uh, – uh, the bigger races will start upwards of 200 riders, but uh, this is a big group to start. That's for sure. And, and now again, the dropouts are giving a go again here. They have been uh, super aggressive early on. We do have Turner. Again, this is going to be your current, and he's showing why he's currently a GC leader right now. 147.16. We thought that it was actually going to be, uh, as we look back at the chase group here, we thought it was Andy going Turner, to be innovation. Correct? Yeah, that's going to yeah. be Andy Turner. Yeah. And uh, interesting to see that Turner continues to push the pace off the front there. Uh, a little bit out of sight here now almost at this point. I think the group is going to trust that he's coming back. Uh, as it looks like Laverick, though, giving it a go. Bard now going again as well. So, And this is the thing about the Gotham grind course. You know, it, it's got all of these little punches over and over and over again. They're not very long, but they come at you so many times. You do have a lot of opportunities to try and keep the speeds high. It might not be about pure watts per kilogram versus watts per kilogram. It's more about what kind of speed can you produce and hang on with when you push those kicks over the top of each one of these little sections. Absolutely. And isn't that part of what you've learned in the game, Nathan, is a lot of the differences made up and over the top of the climbs. I, I guess, I mean, that's like real life as well. The riders that can carry over, you know, it's not just getting to the summit. It's what you're going to do with that. It's bizarre to think about trying to take momentum up and over the top of a, a climb, but there's a lot to that. That's where you make the difference. It's like uh, sometimes they say uh, in, in the world of finance, you know, that the differences are made in the margins. You know, it's that one or two percent on either side there and it's who's willing to hurt more boy is ed laverick one of the greatest riders that we've got uh, in esports right now talk about a guy who makes the race uh, an absolute animator and dictator you know that when we get into the final 10k of this race that you're going to be calling that name nathan is he ever not part of the storyline I, almost I haven't always, been at that almost race. always, yeah. almost always involved for sure, uh, Laverick. That that's for sure. So always be watching out for him uh, at, the, at the finish line. But he's been working on his sprint because on a course like this, doesn't necessarily have the sprint that's needed in order to take the win, especially with this downhill. Uh, you know, this, this it's more of a downhill finish here that they're going to be coming into uh, across the finish line here. So because of that, uh, it's it's going to be a difficult day for him unless he times things absolutely perfectly. You, yeah, you know, the one rider that I really have uh, come to respect, well, a lot of riders, to be honest, as I've learned about this community, Nathan, but Holden Camo, right? Uh, this guy can sprint, can't he? Uh, I, I think you'd even say that if you're going to look at where on the spectrum he falls, he's, uh, he's a sprinter that climbs much better than most sprinters, right? He's usually the last sprinter left, sort of, uh, I think, Corey Williams. And by the way, I don't know if you saw that Legion of L.A. has been running a GoFundMe here in the United States. Uh, well, I guess around the world. But they have raised 80,000 U.S. dollars over the last three, three and a half days for their uh, Los Angeles-based uh, – it's 
heavy on diversity, heavy on community, uh, and, and the new model of what pro – and they race with us all the time. I don't know if we have any Legion riders today, but we will tomorrow for a USA Cycling race, Nathan, for sure. Uh, and I just wanted to spread that good news that the, the communities really come together there for for that squad and they're part of our family man so looks like you're going to jump in nathan a couple different actually four different races going on b category now showing up they've been out on course for 8.5k what have we got here yeah i'm actually going to jump in with uh, a few of the women that have hung in with the oh, lead cool. group actually at this point and they uh it looks like we've got uh, sarah mcmaster here uh, hammer away 3.8 watts per kilogram she's, out of she's here. a monster Nathan 75 beats per minute currently yeah Sarah McMaster riding for the 3R Luna Chicks uh, 3R3 Luna Chicks uh, good to see her out on course level 40 Zwifter it looks like competing pretty well in the series so far uh, looking also amongst this crowd though she seems to be the lead woman it does look like Ann Lowe as well though is trying to chase on but uh, as it is a uh, mass start uh, as far as um, the genders go she is uh, the only woman that's been able to make this lead group. Anne Lowe is in a chase group, though, about 20 seconds back from here. But I don't think they're going to be bringing this back with how many Bs are up in this uh, lead group at this point. 50 plus, 60 almost. I think there's actually 60 plus in this lead group in the B category as they st uh, start their uh, second hero, map out Nathan. here today. She's my hero. That's just awesome. Uh, but talk about punching above your weight, right? Here she yeah, is. Yeah, flying I mean, to hang in this on. front group. Uh, we're yeah. seeing 4.1 watts per kilogram currently at 169 <laughs> beats yeah. per minute right now. And low, uh, also 3.9. She's got a teammate there. It looks like Fiona Mundell uh, from Live By Cycling there. Uh, and low, Fiona Mundell, a little ways back from here in that chase group. We'll see if we can jump in with them. But in this B category, there is a battle going on. Sebastian Kuhn uh, in here, as we were saying just a little bit earlier. Steve Fleetwood's in there as well. There's going to be two riders to be watching out for to try and make their way up over uh, up in the GC standings. We'll see. You know, in the B category, I'll be... <laughs> Uh, we'll see if they get as aggressive. I have a feeling they might be doing a little bit more Grupo Compacto and a little bit more contained with their efforts for the first couple of laps. And then later on, I think we'll start seeing some attacks here in this B category. Yeah, you know, not quite as much razzmatazz, right, for this group, which is the way it should be. I think you keep your cards close to the vest here. You want to, I mean, these are riders that are learning how to win. Uh, it absolutely. Uh, at this point now, we're 10.4 kilometers into a 37 ish kilometer race and uh, nathan I, I have a lot of respect for the the intelligence that we're seeing from this group uh, that's going to be worthington the cryogen rider that nathan's looking at again this is our b race racing on the exact same course again if you're just joining us thank you it has been so cool uh, not just the folks that race on zwift nathan but the folks that have become fans of the racing i, I really appreciate them this is the gotham grind one of uh, uh one of the most i actually i don't know nathan as far as how they rank in popularity but it's one of my favorites, the New York City uh, Central Park course that they're racing on. The Gotham Grind is four laps today. Uh, this is our fourth of seven of the three R series, a really competitive GC. So that means we do this on time, not points. So think stage race like Tour de France, not an omnium like Tulsa Tough. And this is our front group here in the B race. And it's a big group rolling through the first third of this ra race right now, Nathan. As I see, we've got Cormac McGee, Ger Ger Gerard Cycles out of Seattle. That's John Sheehan's company there, and he's got a great Irishman here in Cormac McGill, and it looks like McGill's going to get Laverick with him. Oh, boy. Here we go, Nathan. This will be fun. 13 kilometers in. Mark this point. Interesting moment in the race. Yeah, and we do see Andrew Hart, Hart, um, Andrew Hodden trying to chase that down. He's currently sitting in second overall in the series right now at 147.46, about 30 seconds back from Andy Turner. So it looks like Hodden put a little bit of work here at the front, along with James Barnes from uh, that innovation team starting to take over at the front of the race here. So, I, have, uh, you know, interesting to see because uh, these riders here, uh, from what I can see, Cormac McGill is not involved currently in the overalls as far as the GC contention goes here at this point. So no. uh, I'm wondering if they're going to chase this down or not, if they really care about because bringing Laverick's this back. not either, right, Nathan? No, I need Laverick to is not either. So it's a little bit, yeah, so, a little bit of an interesting yeah. situation because I think the teams here, really, they might yeah, when you see, hold back well here a little riders. bit. I'm sorry there. I'd say they're both pretty well-known riders, but even though they're not up in the, the the overall GC, they see somehow they get the uh, they pass the sniff test of dangerous, right? I think that uh, when you look at McGeo, there's enough riders that are like, uh, we know this kid. 
this is the guy from Durango, right? Yep. And sure enough, there. Well, Laverick goes back. He's going to save it for later, don't you think? I think he's not really that interested uh, to in this because he doesn't. It's it, it doesn't believe it's going to go much of anywhere at this point. But Cormick seems pretty committed now at this point. One eighty two beats per minute here. Kershaw though, PTZ looking to chase things down. I think though the teams that are thinking about GC contention, their own. I think their only real concern here at this point is going across maybe and getting involved in a break. So maybe using this as a launching pad to go across to Cormick and then work with him. We'll have to wait and see if they use that. Uh, Hodges makes his way to the front. Here we are seeing Sars the pearls closet. They were tall. But the Turner, though, again, at the front, that is the current uh, GC contender leader uh, right now, uh, trying to stay involved as much as he can toward the front end of this race. Innovation still, I think, just licking their chops, though, saying, nope, not yet, boys. Uh, and uh, I don't think that they're going to get too involved as of yet, as I think Innovation uh, are waiting for some of the legs to get a little bit more tired and a smaller pack at this point. Yeah, when you see Sarah's pros closet get interested, uh, that certainly uh, is going to, to let you know that uh, they're in shutdown mode right now, at least as we make our, through the mid, make our way through the midpoint of the race. And that's going to be Cormac McGeeo being reabsorbed here. So really just stretching the legs at this point. We're far enough out that uh, I don't think he would have burnt any uh, unnecessary matches. Not, it Look at that. Uh, Look at the tail here, though. <laughs> that Ooh. really did some damage here. I mean, look at this. We are off the back that. now. Oh, yeah, boy. I mean, we've done. Uh, we've we've definitely dropped wow. quite a few off here at this point. So yeah, well, it, it looks like, like a regular a regular catch at the front, Nathan. But there's a lot more drama at the back. Yeah, Mancio here coming from the PTZ team. James Hodges at the back here as well. It looks like James Barnes there. Twitch TV with a solid little nine watts per kilogram, making sure that he does not find himself off the back for a second. And now getting into a super tuck. Interesting to see. As you can see, he's actually playing really smart. One, He's not in trouble. Wow. 157 beats per minute. He's just looking to be as little energy as possible, it looks like, at this point. Because he... <laughs> That 3%, that negative 3%, you just saw, just so everybody knows out there, you can use your uh, watts to go to zero watts. It's, a, it's an in-game tactic. It's like if you were using your controller and playing a video game and you wanted to do a special move, you push a certain button. Well, this right. is an opportunity. Whenever you see a negative 3% gradient or more and you are over 35 miles per hour in, kilometer, in, in, in KPH, I believe that's somewhere in the upper 50s, uh, then you can get into a super tuck. You go to zero watts, your avatar tucks into a super tuck, and then you gain speed automatically without pushing without pushing any more watts. And did you see what he did there at the back of the pack? He's yeah, looking for every cool. ounce of energy. So, I think he's waiting for a late attack here, Dave. And, and Nathan, you made a really interesting point there. I want to go back to that where you said uh, you looked at his heart rate and you said, ah, 157. What number would tell you, what's the threshold there, the the over-under? Like if you saw something over 170 and he was doing that, it's a whole different ball game, right? I mean, at 157, you're saying, oh, no, he's pretty comfortable right now. He ha He's not extending himself. He's not in the red zone. Uh, is 170 where you'd say, oh, boy, that guy's struggling? Yeah, so I mean, depending on on the athlete, of course, that's max heart rate. Heart, we're max heart about, rate, yeah, course, max yeah, heart rate yeah. definitely matters with all of those different kinds of metrics. But uh, I mean, if we go ahead and take a look at a rider over here, Taylor, on the attack here from Crowden, Crowden just did a really organized attack through the exact What's same heart rate that we just yeah, that's watched. A good and now just 181 for, beats per minute. Now, if his right. max heart rate, though, is, let's say, 185, 190 or so, he's in the absolute red. He can only do this effort for probably one to maybe three minutes or so, right? And it doesn't exactly. matter what your max heart rate is. And so generally... In the age and his raises, is probably more in the, in the low 200s, right, wouldn't you say, for... You know, Taylor, perhaps because, he. I have a feeling on a full on attack right here. I have a feeling this is actually into his zone five to zone six, though. I have a feeling that okay. this rider is actually over threshold at this point. He could not hold this effort for 20 minutes to an hour, and that this athlete needs to back off pretty soon, but has done the work to make a break happen. As you can see, he split the Sure. Field. 
And now he, what really, this is where the elite of the elite separate themselves is your ability to recover right now when you've been at that type of effort, right, Nathan? I mean, to, to, to recover now just sitting in the wheels here, if he can come back, that he's, you know, that's a world-class type athlete that you're looking at. It's really cool, the dynamics of the, the physiology of what's going on for these athletes out here. Nathan, so often you talk about the, the TSS or the guys that can just try to keep as chill as you can. Is this really reasonable making the splits you know not getting caught out on the on the wrong side and uh it's not just burning calories out here it's about uh, not having to keep spiking your heart rate as well jeremiah bishop racing today this is or no excuse me. i think that's this just a, a jay bishop coming bishop. out of the yep. uk here so i'm, I'm uh, conditioned i'm conditioned for our friend jeremiah the american uh he's with us a lot oh here's something cool to watch nathan i think this chase group might just be able to rejoin here let's watch this yeah, it looks like they are making a chase here. Skeet here now trying to make his way to the front. It looks like nine watts per kilogram real quickly. They're coming from that rider here. So, uh, but uh, yeah, as far as the, quickly though on the whole, you know, a lot of times the question, well, Nathan, what do you think about this rider's heart rate? You know, it is very individual. In general, we could say, like there's a very general statement that I'll look at some heart rates. I'll kind of know an athlete a little bit more. I'll know their age. I'll know, you know, what kind of a... Uh, a level that they ride at and I can make a guess between 165 and 180 they're probably around their threshold but you can't really I mean even within there there's so much little bits of dynamics and then you got a rider like James Hodges who Hodges beats super low if he's in the 160s I know he's suffering majorly but I just know that about the rider because I've seen his heart rate right. so many different times and I've raced against him and so and it, it is very personal as far as that goes and that's why some riders when they're out on Zwift at the pro level they'll hide their heart rate purposefully they will purposely say I'm not showing my heart rate I don't want people to know how hard I'm working and what I can do for one hour or two hours whatever it might be you'll see that for, with the pros for in real life because they're not used to showing those metrics and what they do then is they say I don't want my competition to know what I can do and what they have to do to beat me. So it's an interesting dynamic there with Zwift racing where it shows something you couldn't usually see. Right. Yeah, no, it's almost like if in NASCAR you had the ability to say, do you want the competitors to see how much fuel you have left? It'd be like, no, I don't. And I, I think the same thing with your heart rate. If they don't have to know, you'd much rather they not know because that's a, a big indicator. But you make a good point then going back, circling back, talking about James Hodges earlier. At 157, he might be working harder than that sounds. Uh, so anyways, and also can't read too much into some of these numbers either. You have to know the athlete specifically looking like another attack rolling off the front here. Majeski, it looks like we're going to see a run here. That's going to be the Zwift Polish team. They represented well out here as we take a look at Barbara Robinson. It looks like everything holding together but for how much longer again this is the b race we're looking at they're almost 18 kilometers in the a men will be a little bit further down the road here four circuits today out here in the gotham the gotham grind uh, yeah, real quick, just wanted to stick in with this, Jolie, just because there were a couple of turning of the screws there coming from some of the teams there. It looked like it was a decision moment for the race out here, and it is starting to split things up again a little bit as they head into their next two laps. Let's go ahead and jump back in with the A's as they're out into about a lap and a half or so to go. A couple of attacks did happen here uh, as we were away for a moment over through the sprint section, uh, but things have calmed right on down in the A category at this point, it looks like. Uh, hold in there. SARS Pro's Clause. If there's one rider I'd be saying to watch out for out here today uh, on this kind of a sprint, this is a pure wattage cottage, as you would say, <laughs> when it comes to yeah. a sprint out here hold today. It. You know, and, and he's got the numbers for that. This is a rider who has that pure sprint full on. If you've seen any of the live videos, what? make sure to check them out there. And he, oh, he owns this national champions kit for exactly that reason, uh, you know, is that he knows how to sit in, be smart and take it down when it comes down to the line in a very fast turn of speed. Yeah. I mean, he's the true tr uh, triple threat uh, without any doubt. You know, Nathan, I mean, if, we're, if it's going to be a sprint finish with more than 25, 30 guys, which it certainly looks like it might be today is Leandro Messinio, the most dangerous rider. Or Holden, I would. That's kind of my. Uh, that would be my estimation. 
as they take a look at the other riders. I mean, there's going to be a flurry of attacks. Uh, there's no doubt we're going to witness the, what is just so great about these races in the last 5K. It is old school fury out there, no doubt. But what do you think, Leandro, the man to beat? You know, I... I, it'll be really interesting out here today because of the kind of course that we're on. I haven't actually seen, now this is something that's a little new, is that I haven't seen this crowd on this kind of a sprint finish. Like the last time I've seen this kind of a sprint finish uh, w was with, um, I would say, the um, James Phillips, really, coming from the Canyon ZCC boys, taking it down, and they just dominated this sprint finish. So, you know, and this there's a whole new crowd, there's a new crop of Zwift racers, uh, e-racers here that are showing up out here. And, uh, you know, Holden, I've not seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe on this specific uh, sprint, and, and this one is so unique with the downhill lead-in. Uh, now, we did see it, though, interesting enough, we did see it in the uh, recent uh, Tour for All, and uh, the, in the Pro-Am racing there. And uh, that ended up being a, a very interesting sprint with Nikki Hug taking it down. And so, it, you know, it, it's a very... And Nikki Hug is a light rider. I mean, a light rider with a very high watts per kilogram. So, um, you know, I, I'm kind of up in the air here. I'm going to go again, though, the favorites when you come to a sprint that are in this field, Evoke, Hodges, Holden Camus, neck and neck. That's the head-to-head -head that I'm looking at for sure. But there's, again... There are so many riders here, and 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 such. I think so many riders that are focusing so differently out here recently. Um, we could have an upset. I think there's a lot of wild cards today. Yeah, I'll just throw one at you. I, I don't even think it's a dark horse, Nathan. I think a wild card would be right. Uh, maybe not even that. Vigo Moore, the 17-year-old. Uh, in real life, he rides for the Lux team, which is really America's top junior road team, men and women right now. They have just been absolutely crushing it out there. And Vigo uh, has been on the podium in eSports racing over the last few, I, I would say even in the last month. So, yeah, that's certainly a rider I'd be keeping. Uh-oh, maybe a dropout for Leandro. This is uh, yeah, the rider we were talking about. Yeah, I just saw a comment come on through, coming on in from... Uh, yeah, bummer. Yeah, coming on Bummer. in from the chat, actually. Not sure. Keith Robinson saying not racing tonight. It looks like he was racing tonight, but uh, it looks like unable to hold on to the Snickers bar just ahead of him there. Thanks for that catch, up. though. But uh, good to see it. Leandro out there cooling down. It does look like a few of his teammates have made the made the break, though, at this point. So Messineo, yeah. though, not in the lead group any longer. Juan Cruz, his uh, Argentinian teammate. But thanks for that catch. I'm glad that we didn't keep going on about a guy that wasn't in the group any longer. You do uh, have Holden right there. You can see that uh, the Saris TPC, the pros closet rider, the the American flag and black livery. Teammate here, Ryan Larson, sitting pretty here, 36 points right now. So they do have a lot. What a strong mode. team. Yeah, strong team here. You can you know, They still have in-game the indoor specialist kit there with the orange and light blue. The recent pickup of the new sponsor, Saris, the pro's closet. So really cool to see the support there. Now, there is an attack off the front. Is that going to be It's gonna be Talbot again? I have a feeling it is. I think he's been the workhorse looking to try and just break things apart. They've been sending him off the front over and over again. And I think the well, idea here <laughs> is to – oh, no, it's Devin. Dempster, Gavin Dempster here, 6'9 off the front here, as you can see, Nanderson Richards now. Good to see Dempster give a little dig, 181 beats per minute. That's a high heart rate there coming from Dempster right now. And looking to just kind of, maybe he got a little bored. I mean, yeah, no team like out? this. Yeah, this squad can stir the pot at any time, right? They sense a lull. They just send one of their strong. I mean, they have so many resources they can go to on that squad. It looks like we've lit the fuse once again. All right, we kind of move into a new mode here as we're inside of 10 kilometers to go here. Again, that team in the orange and blue, also remembering that that's the team of the, our national champion, uh, Holden Camo. We've talked a bit about him. All right, there's a nice tip coming in from Keith. Keith has some uh, street credibility with us, right, Nathan? He's the guy that noted that Leandro was no longer in the group, so let's give him his credit. Don't discount Bernard Estreisen for the sprint, and we won't. Noted. Noted 100%. All right, now, now, has Estreisen made it, though? Has he made this group? That's what I'm going to have to double check here. And it does look like Bernard is here alongside with us in 42nd place. Watch out for Estreisen. And that's actually a newer name so that that's been popping up on my radar. <laughs> He's Trust been popping up on my. From Nathan Guerra, yeah. He's been he's been popping up on my radar quite a bit actually recently. I did see him in some podiums, and I think winning a sprint actually a few weeks back in one of these uh, one of these larger broadcast races. So yeah, definitely watch out for Bernard. If we look at his Zwift power stats.
stats as well. I have a feeling that we're going to start seeing uh, a, a, a flurry of races, you know, that he's been jumping into recently and uh, most likely uh, getting a lot of experience under his belt, I would think, here. Bernard, I saw Kirchmer, oh, riding for Kirchmer Ear Cycling. And there, I mean, there's, oh, there's a name that we know. Level 33. Uh, the best podium, though, he's had recently, it looks like Watopia Cup race, Zwift Classic. I mean, that's a serious race to win. He won that back on April 25th, but it uh, doesn't look like he's had too many big results as of recently. So we'll have to see. Maybe today is going to be the day for him. Uh, out here on this sprint course because I have a feeling I'm seeing a lot of four three three seven lower fours as far as the watts per kilogram go when it comes to his average watts in these bigger races but maybe it's because he's got a big turn of speed as a, a as a larger rider coming in at 80 kilograms yeah, he knows how to chill in the group as well a savvy rider I would guess yes yeah, Stefan Kirchmeier the Austrian runs had quite a team they're, they're a powerhouse squad coming out of uh, Europe as we kind of bounce around. This group looks a little smaller, doesn't it, Nathan? They've uh, they've taken out that 20-pound sledgehammer and have wailed away a couple of times. When they do that, we see, you know, four, six riders get shed out the back. And it's starting to get a little more serious. Again, we've got a bunch of races going on. We're looking at uh, Bard attacking a ride 3R racer. They, uh, again, credit where credit is due. This team, uh, uh, we'd like to talk about... Uh, the squads that make a difference. Well, this is one of them for sure. And it looks like who's coming up to join here, Nathan. It looks like Turner's one of the riders. Yeah, and that's the overall. Gonna be big serious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is a series. This is the fourth of seven. It's a GC series, and you're looking uh, at the man here right now. I think that's what we're talking about now. Uh, a little bit of a GC shakeout happening here. Everyone wanted to make sure they're on the right side of what could be a split about to happen. Yeah, we're seeing it looks like H. Mustard coming on through. Even the mustard here looks like as it's in these uh, getting back on off cryogen. Trying to give a little bit of a kick, it looks like, through this section as they finish up their third lap out here. Doesn't look like it's going to be going much anywhere. 10K to go, 10K to go out on course. Kershaw there closing things down, it looks like. Evoke, as we were talking about earlier, just sitting pretty about mid pack at this point. Uh, a couple of attacks. Turner continues to be active at the front, but I have a feeling that, you know. I have a feeling that this last lap, though, there's going to be a lot of fireworks because there's a lot of riders in here still with 60 or so riders, eh, maybe maybe 45 plus at this point. But with that many riders still involved, the, the non-sprinters are going to be sick and sick and tired of it. And if they don't got a big team along with them that they're working for anything, they're going to just start throwing fireworks left and right, just try and haymake or see what they can get done here. And uh, I am getting a couple of other uh, shout-outs here. Uh, Ed Laverick will attack with 5KM to go. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good... I that's think that a that's a guess. really good call there. That I mean, Laverick does not want to sprint finish here. Uh, you know, Ed said on the stream that he's looking for a good workout out here today. Keith Robinson is actually coming in with a straight-up prediction out here. Let's hear your predictions for your top threes. And Keith is saying that he's saying his top three, Esterhausen, Camus, and Moore there. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm not going to throw my my uh, chips in the table just oh. yet. But uh, pretty good uh, prediction there coming in from from Keith Robinson. I tell you, no one would be laughing at that choice, would they? When when you look at the boxing of the trifecta, there, uh, pretty savvy choices, that's for sure. You know, Nathan, when you look at it, this is a sprinter's delight. It really is. Now that they've done three laps out here, you really realize that uh, as long as you've got that grinta that they talk about in Italy, and these sprinters do, they know that they can get over these climbs, they can make the right watts. So everything now is copacetic. If you're a rider like Holden, you know you're not going to get dropped out of this front group. You start worrying about trying to cover and kill any moves that go. And if you're holding, you've got this insanely talented and strong team around you to help you do that. Same thing with 3R, our host club here. It's, uh, you know, you've got resources to use. And this is when, uh, you know, you might have to deploy them. You still want to be smart about things. It's going to be a big group coming to the line today. There's no doubt about that in my mind, Nathan. I, uh, this is the kind of race, right, that the triathletes probably hate. I would think. Um, <laughs> I was talking with Lizzie Duncombe about this. Uh, she's been joining us here on the broadcast. That's fun to see. As you know, w once you catch uh, an interest in racing, this is the kind of race, though, that the sprinters just revel in. I mean, they're licking. Welcome to their neighborhood, I think uh, guys like Holden are thinking. 
looking here real quick. I mean, I have to agree. With, I have to agree with you there. You know, there is there's some tactics that could be played here, and so Vigo Moore, another rider you talked about before the race here, and this is a rider that's up and coming in Zwift racing. We've seen him win some sprints recently. That's another name that I would be watching out for, and I, we keep on saying this, but I mean, this is a very stacked sprinters field. That's for sure. Now there is a reality though that. If the right teams get involved in a breakaway situation right now, it might not come back, right? So you've got a couple of riders. Sure. Cork McGill. Cork McGill, not a whole lot of teammates out there. He goes off the front with innovation. Uh, we get we get uh, Gavin Dempster involved, not their sprinter. Exactly. Obviously going to be somebody. So Sars Pro Class is not be. chasing then. You know, you get the teams involved. So De Dempster goes off the front. Maybe Zimmerman goes. McGill and then Barnes or something along those lines. And maybe that maybe dropouts with Turner. Boom. You've got four of the five teams, five of the teams there. Then KRT got a chase. Then, then three R got a chase. Do they have the firepower even to bring something like that back? But it would have to be almost like this super organized. Everybody's got the same motivation at the same time, but that kind of a group getting away, I could see it stick, but it's going to have to happen soon. If it's going to happen. Right. You know, Nathan, I couldn't agree more, but it's like one of those things like a souffle. It, it has to be the perfect ingredients with the perfect temperature at the perfect time. Right. So it's it's a little trick. I mean, but when that happens, it's the best. I mean, it really is. So, I mean, and that's why we don't just line them up one kilometer from the finish line and have them sprint because these are the tactics that make the racing so good. So if you're backing Laverick as Will uh, stay interesting. Is, yeah, that's so, just interesting. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I love it, though, because if you are, that tells me you think it's going to be like Laverick wins with a one second in the bank, a solo breakaway. Right. And, and as you said earlier, Nathan, he did he a whole video day. So he did this ago. whole, I, you know, I yeah. don't know if he can increase his, his sprint by what is needed, you know, in, in, in a matter of four weeks or whatever. But he's been on this like increase my sprint <laughs> program. He did a whole YouTube video on here's how I'm going to do it. This is the plan. And he's been sticking to it, looks like. And we'll see what he can pull out of the bag here, man. But it's going to be have the rabbit out of the hat from what I've seen against this kind of a crowd. Hill. It takes a really uh, a, a, a athlete with an agenda to train their weakness, right? That's somebody who really wants to get better. No doubt about it. Laverick, one of the most talented and enjoyable racers to watch out here. Again, he's sort of like a Jens Volt type racer, right? He's willing to suffer more. He digs deeper. He attacks a, a roulette type rider. Certainly, as you've noted, he's working on his sprinting. That's going to be a fun. Uh, that's going to be fun to watch how he progresses in that journey. So again, though, Nathan, they're pressing here, and this is what sort they, of are what they we're coming talking up about. On, uh, I mean, lap riders? Is that what's happening here? It looks it like they're coming be. up on some lap so riders. The, like or possibly some of the B, D or D category riders, maybe they're gonna come flying right on through them here, and this could be an opportunity actually for a few riders. Oh no, nope, left hand turn. Okay, so no, it was just some Good. riders that All were right. a different section of the course there. So and George Mills Keeling's like, uh oh, what's happening? <laughs> he was actually concerned because they're about to go right on through. And if you get the sticky draft, a lot of times you can kind of use that as a crit corner. So <laughs> the way that, the way that I like in going through a large pack of lapped riders or riders that are going slower is that you can kick through the corner and lose the wheel of another rider and that rider might get stuck on somebody's wheel or there might be not enough room through the corner to get through as fast as maybe the top 10 did next thing you know there's a gap boom race is on so a lot of times there's people use lap riders <laughs> this this game hack brought to you by Nathan Guerra is uh, I love it. It seems like every race we do, Nathan, I learn something, and I like that one. That's a sneaky little move, uh, attacking through the group. Right, that would be frowned on in the World Tour peloton. <laughs> you'd, you'd have someone blow their nose on you when they caught you later. It comes, so, I mean, I guess it's the mountain I, bike thing: attack into the yeah, yeah. track and just give it. I mean, put your head down yeah. and go. So. Racing's racing, man. Whatever it takes. So things are changing out there as far as, you know. This I mean, is the kick right here. This is it right here, yeah. Dave. This is that 10% okay. gradient we're going to jump into in just a second now. Seven watts watch per number. Anderson now. Talbot. Herod now. Talbot They're here. Going. TPC. Interesting to see. 10. What? He's already up into 187. Full on attack here. 11. 12 watts per kilogram almost here coming from Talbot. Sars Bros oh, Closet. Bring in the watts now at this point. He's got to split. 
but they're trusting. It looks like, and I'm not sure it's enough. He needed like it three needs or four to be others three to go. Three times longer. It needs to be three or four times longer than that to be able to really make a difference. Because he was flogging himself like a rented mule there. But you can see when you've got a group of riders this strong, this ambitious, they are charging now. Yeah, that uh, unfortunately everything resets. We're taking a look at the very front of the bike race now. This is the Vanguard here. Okay, Nathan, you can look feel behind. it's starting to really pick up now. Yeah, a little bit of a whip snap here going on, it looks like, at the back of the group now you at this guys point. Get caught out. On through. Yeah. Three are well represented. We're here from Jay Saunders, Gleason, maybe a sleeper. We keep There's hearing five, about six that. Name. Riders, Nathan. Yeah, it looks like five, there's a few riders. Guys. This is obviously fast enough, and a lot of these riders are starting getting tired at this point. And we've got about five, four or five K to go at this point. It's a little over 37 kilometers to the finish line in total. Huel, Cryogen on the front, pushing the pace to South Africa. 180 beats per minute. He sees the suffering. They have split some off the back. Is that a green jersey off the back here? Is that a dropouts rider that's gone? Who is it that's been caught out at this point having a tough day? As we go back, it looks like it's going to be... No, Esther Hilsen. It looks like S.T. Houston just hanging on. This was the call out for the rider here. 194. Being a larger rider, he's got big watts here. But over that climb, it looks like in it really made jersey, him suffer. Correct, Nathan? Yep, it, blue he's jersey. He's in the blue jersey working right through the middle of the group. Actually, good job with the camera there, Nathan. As you can see, now this rider that uh, Keith had, had tipped to us earlier. But uh, ab absolutely, this is the man who could be coming out of the woodwork on us here today. As he's now, uh, he, yeah, that was a moment there. A little bit of a that moment. That was a moment. That lost. Was a moment. <laughs> but Loving he's it. back into the group now and he's actually starting to position himself much better here nathan i love your knowledge here as we've mentioned we haven't raced extensively on this course uh, for, i think for a lot of these guys this isn't going to be like the back of their hand as some of the other courses that we race on quite a bit might be I, uh, as we're going to be watching closely here now again it's going to be over 37k you can bet your bottom dollar on that maybe even over 30 eight uh but we'll watch closely here for these indicators that these guys all now when the horse can smell the barn and gavin dempster one of the big talents out here he's going all right watch this now watch closely this is gonna have the alarm bells ringing gavin dempster nathan you know he's a huge talent this man is a wattage cottage Dempster here trying to give it a go. Is he going to be able to hang on? Look, I'm here in... Uh, a little far out. Little I mean, far out. Three seconds, though. Nobody's chasing what is happening here. Eight watts per kilogram. This is the section that, I mean, to be doing it in. It's a 3%. Now, it's going to go downhill for a moment. But right now, from here into the finish line, there is this... Falls flat for a long period of time, and he can hold. If he gets the gap here, this might be done. Laverick's going to try and go across. I'm wow. guessing at this point, Laverick has to go if he wants to be involved. Huel as well, though. We're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. This is the front of the bike race. Or this is the front of the pack here. 7.3 from Huel. Huel trying to make the chase now. Dempster has a gap of 8 watts per kilogram. 188 beats per minute. Will Sarge the pros cause to give the upset? It's a big ask out here today. But you know what's happening here, Dave? Who's sitting in? Holden is just going to sit pretty this and let them, let them pull. Check. Absolutely. Uh, bike Racing 101 on display from Sarah's TPC right now. Again, this is the Scottish wonder. It's Dempster here, the winner of the Tour of the Gila. He can do it. I mean, he absolutely can do it. And who's going to benefit more than anyone? His teammate Holden Camo, the oh, uh, Camus, reigning Pete U.S. saying there, exactly. This is going to be perfect. So they've set the table. So now if he doesn't Laverick. get there, now Laverick is going to be the wild card here because the Welsh rider, this is going to be bananas, Nathan. This could be one of the best finales that we get to witness all spring long because Ed Laverick, if he can get up to Dempster and they can work together, this could be the most potent two rider combo but they're gonna nathan it's gonna be a long deep run to the finish line here these guys are gonna be scraping the bottom of the barrel i'm gonna throw it back to you nathan we should be about a kilometer from the finish yeah, and it's about one climber to the finish line. It does look like Laverick now. Nine watts per kilogram here. Will there be an upset here to the finish line? It looks like though with only two seconds, three seconds, six one seconds. They've almost caught out. This is how Nikki Hug did it as well, but Dempster sits on. Dempster's going to get Laverick's wheel. If Dempster can come over the top with another kick, it's going to be said and done. Oh, now the Dutchman's coming over the top. Will this Dutchman come out of nowhere? He's I think they're going to... Oh, my goodness. Like chip. 10 watts per kilogram. Goes up and over the top, Nathan. This is unbelievable. Out of nowhere. Can he hold on? This man is going nuclear powered. They used to call this New York City. We're in downtown Pain City right now, Nathan. What a finale. Can you believe that he went by Dempster and Laverick? This is Young and Neyland. This is a command performance, Nathan. 
Now it looks like it's going to be Fusion. Vigo Moore here right to the line for the sprint. And it looks like Vigo and Holden right there. Oh, Holden Camille, it looks like Holden taking it down. It looks like, oh my goodness, what a kick there coming from Holden. It looks like at the finish line. John is there, the Dutchman. We'll have to wait and see. Unfamiliar with the rider. I'm just going to call it out. Just going to call it out. We're unfamiliar with the rider so real quickly. Some, uh, we're going to send that up to corporate. We're some background. Yeah, we're going to send that up to the to 3R. To 3, 3R being the race, uh, the race organizers. They'll check it out. Yep. They'll check it all out. But at this point, Zwift Power has Ooh. already pulled, pulled Niels at this point. So we'll have okay, to wait and so. see. Uh, the, but, I mean, if he's got dual recording... What's going to end up happening is uh, he'll be asked. Oh, man. He'll be, Niels will be asked to uh, submit, you know, in order to. But across the board with Niels right now at this point, his 20-minute, uh, I mean, just about every single race he's been in recently has been pushing six watts per kilogram. And so because of that, um, he's, been, he's been pulled from them as of recently, just so everybody knows. So it was actually a race between uh, Holden and, uh, and Vigo to the line there. And, and, and we, we called we it out earlier. Nathan yeah, yep. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Understood. And do we know who got the better at the line there? I all that craziness I, I missed. So Vigo is the 17-year-old Lux rider. He's an American, but we think he's living in Germany. I think he's still over there. And Holden, we talk about a lot. He's been at times. He's one of the. Well, there was a really great Velo News article about him that sort of shows you his status. But one of the most recognized and respected esports racers out there, and well decorated as well. Who got it, Nathan? Do you know? Yeah, it was right to the line there, and it ended up being. I mean, you saw it on the video there. We do not have replay, right? Uh, See, we do yes, not have replay, but we I. Go to that we go to that, but it was ABI, correct this time. Uh, it was actually correct ABI. this time around. Holden did get it by that tire length. I'm just waiting for the results to update here in just a moment. Okay, but, uh, that was like great. Holden, Vigo, St and uh, uh, was Kirchmer actually in here today? Interesting to see. Yeah, I think he was. St Stefan Kirchmeier, the Austrian. Yeah, I guess he was. I was interesting to yeah. see. And Kirschmeier there makes looks sense like ended up taking down third place. And looks like Adam Zimmerman for, for fourth. Alistair Thomas, Ryan Larson, Tom Heal, Simon Nielsen, and then Andrew Hodden there, I believe, is coming through for ninth. There's Juan Cruz Araldi, who you had called out earlier, rounding out the top ten. We've got a race here though in the B category. Yeah, the B's are still uh, out there. Yeah, Panero here trying to kick things up. It looks like this is going to be one of the top ones in the GC. We'll jump. We'll jump back in with the results as they do get. Uh, uh, cleared up here in just a moment just to make sure that we put the right thing out on broadcast as far Smart. as everything goes but uh, as they do get updated we'll let everybody know but better remember my joke attack. Nathan remember the joke do you want the results now or do you want them correct exactly right? Exactly. So, hey, um, we we uh, we uh, have a really strong Portuguese element out there, uh, and I think Luis is a good example of that. The R three R Fleetwood Mac squad is going to be really well represented out here. Looks like they're pretty well represented in this group as well. Some more of the Kirkmeyer riders. There's a movement out of Austria right now. Uh, so a lot of uh, strong Zwifters. I think uh, they're having a lot of fun with it. I love seeing that. Yeah, it looks like a uh, little bit of attack here coming in from 3R have been really well represented in this B category race. And uh, as they come they sure into are. their finish line, a little bit different situation. It's their race to no lose. I'll tell you that. At this point, you know, Look at the coverage Cryogen. they've got in the front of this group. They, they're, they're well represented here, sitting right where you want to be as a team as well. As, uh, well, Nathan, uh, about 2K to go for these guys. Yeah, this is that little uphill grind that we saw the attack coming in from Dempster just a moment ago. Nobody really willing to give a go here at this point, though. I think everybody's just setting up for a sprint finish. It's been a very cagey ride here from these uh, B category riders. Sebastian Kuhn, though, sitting second wheel. This is a rider to watch out for from Vision. He's been riding out on Zwift since beta days, and uh, that's definitely a rider who's got a solid sprint uh, coming into the finish line. He's sitting in the top ten. We'll see if he can take this down. But now a little bit of push off the front here coming from, it looks like it's going to Majewski be. or? No, I want oh, to say no I'm sorry. Ellis there. Ellis there out of Australia, actually, with a little bit of a gap even, 381. But, you know, we saw what happened. On this downhill, the pack is just come flying up on them. Yeah, is exactly as Nathan has foreshadowed. That's the catch. So now the swarm. And we'll reset here as this is now into the finale. There's no doubt, Nathan, this group is sprinting. At, well, 
we witnessed sort of an off script uh, rider attacking in the in the A's race earlier, and there you go, Sidoti. It looks like or no, excuse me, who's it going to be off the front here now? Pinero, Pinero actually now giving it off the front. It is Pinero, the uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the the Portuguese leader. man. Current leader of the series here, trying to lead things out, but it's not going to be happening there as they come on through. It's going to be Ooh. Atkinson here from the BRT team. Now, nine watts for Kilgram right to the line with Jay Martin from race 3R. It looks like Atkinson's going to be able to hang on. Is it? Whoa! The Majuska, what is that? Almost oh, at the oh, line. Man. That looks like a second place, though. What a kick. And that was perfectly timed there from the Bache Polish Majewski. rider. That, uh, wow, absolutely <laughs> dialed that one in. Boom, boom. Out go the lights, however you goes say to that show in the Polish. Timing. goes to show how important the timing there is on those specific sprints. So uh, just uh, so we are going to show the results, guys, uh, for the A category, but I just want to give a quick little, uh, you know, from the image here, it's going to show Niels at the top, but he has been removed preliminary-wise from the results so just everybody bumps up one just so everybody knows okay um and and that is nothing against the rider the you know they're there it's just hey you need to submit some dual recording do some testing uh because uh there there's just a reality of like you showed up and did five five to six watts per kilogram in every single race that you've jumped into on average for the entirety of the race, which means a lot of times that the trainer is a little bit off. So uh, Holden actually taking down the win with our preliminary results. Viggo Moore followed up by Stephen Kirchmer, Adam Zimmerman, Alistair Thomas, Ryan Larson, Tom Heal, Simon Nielsen, and Andrew Hodden. Not separated at all in time at this point. So because of that, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of changes in the overalls, obviously, as everybody made that front group that needed to. Uh, solid results, though, here. Dempster, uh, now, uh, looks like interesting to see. I'm getting, uh, I believe Dempster ended up in 10th place overall, so he's just off of the board here after that attack off the front with Laverick. Where did Laverick end up? Laverick ended up... Well, who, it's it's it, Nathan, the riders, when they finish, the first thing they do after they've got the sweat off their brow is hit Swift power, right? I'm <laughs> yeah, guessing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they're all looking... Yeah, uh, it's just it's how it works. I mean, you do that much work, you really want to look at that data. They're, these guys are data hungry, without any doubt. It's a, it's part of the process for sure. Well, Gotham Grind is going to be memorable, Nathan, as a race where, if you attack late, I think you might have a chance. I think we're going to learn something about this course. I think what you were talking about about a uh, halfway through the race about the right breakaway could make it work. I'm excited to see the day that happens. I think it will happen. We race on this course four more five four or five more times at this level. I think they'll crack the code. Looking here at the B category though, Mach J with that last second. You know, and talking about cracking the code on this course. Did you see the turn of speed that came over because of how sharp that downhill? Remember when you go the other direction? What, you were talking what about. kind of a it kick it is? What kind of a kick it is yep. in the other direction uphill? Same way though with the speed and the downhill, you can go, you can gather so much of it in that last couple of meters. Boom! And Mach J just barely taking it out there over Carl Atkinson, Jono Martin, and it's gonna be Philip Proctor, Stuart Hardy, then Martin Tickner, Stuart Leach, Luis Pinero gonna hold on to the GC overall. But uh, wasn't able to hold on to that lead out that he gave everybody. Otto Slavos and then Sebastian Kuhn running out for the top 10. But good job. Luis was not finished up yet, just so everybody knows. Otherwise, we'd give you guys some results. Good. Uh, it's nice to see the GC leader mixing it up. Good work, Luis. Uh, you know what I'm saying, Nathan? You, typically, you see a little more conservative style racing. I Well, not typically, because this is a whole new world that we're racing into. So good. I hope it's like that, because that was an absolute blast to watch across all of our categories here today. It's great day of racing, Nathan. It never disappoints, does it? I love Tuesdays. And a big thanks to Wahoo as well, getting everything kicked off. Uh, and I'm going to remember this course, Nathan. I think this course has a lot more breakaway potential like you were talking about. I think it does. I think it is. I think the Gotham grind, if the if the teams get organized, this is the course to be watching out for that uh, they can look forward to to, to kind of try and test their metal on. Whether or not they can break a, a large group with 180 riders starting in that A category. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. I definitely want to give a shout out here as well, real quickly, uh, amongst the B category with the women. Sarah McMaster, nice job out there to the women that showed up on the day. Uh, th this specific, um, on, on this day, it looks like Sarah able to take 120 
I'm seeing, uh, I think it was 128th overall from what I saw just a moment ago. Uh, and then uh, she was the first woman across the line. Uh, sorry, 164th overall. First woman across the line. And Holo and Holo chasing that down. Going to be second overall on the day uh, for Live by Cycling. And then Fiona Mundell, her teammate, Live by Cycling as well, um, going to be third place overall amongst the women in the. And they jumped into the B category. So shout out to the women. Uh, out there today in that B category uh, that uh, we're racing. Again, we'll be back tomorrow, everybody. If you haven't checked out on socials, we did post our schedule for the week. The one thing that did not get into the schedule, I do want to shout out the NRS series is happening. Uh, with uh, uh, and We'll be live also on Cycling Australia as well as SBS and all of the lands down under with uh, Matthew Keenan and Pat Shaw uh, as well as Carly Taylor. So be on the watch out for that. Everybody on Friday is one thing that missed the schedule. But otherwise, it's the usual uh, that we've had leading into this uh, summer here, months of Zwifting. Obviously, we're going to be having USA Cycling League tomorrow for the afternoon race, and I'll be racing in the evening race. We'll have the focus on individual streamers, obviously, as we've been doing a lot of times for the evening race. There's also the morning race you can jump into. Uh, pretty awesome. And then, obviously, WTRL number 60. Dave, number 60 I know. happening this week. And uh, last week's broadcast was awesome. So make sure if you got a team, I think we're pushing 4,000 at this we point. We have Rutgers. so much fun. I mean, yeah, it's the best. It really is. This concept of team time trialing, Nathan, uh, it's so that World Tactical Racing League, it is a phenomenon. If you're not doing it, find three or four. Actually, what really? Find seven. Eight, friends. up to eight. You can have up to yeah, eight. Yeah, you and seven folks. But So it's not exactly easy, but it is so worth it. It's one of the best things going on Swift right now, for sure. 100%. And it's, so are you, Nathan. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate I appreciate that, 100%. All right, also, one other thing. If you do do any of these Wahoo Ride Wheel races, Wahoo's giving away some stuff. Make sure to jump on into them. All you got to do is register and be a part of the race. And uh, 3R are doing those raffles and giveaways. We may have a couple of four subscribers as well later on uh, to the ZCL channels as well. So uh, we are looking to try and set that up. So it'll be cool uh, in the future. Thanks to Wahoo. Thanks to 3R. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the USA Cycling Series. As always, everybody, I'm Nathan Guerra, Dave Toll. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for USA Cycling. Right on.